Busher, who would you say are some of your favourite boxers? Mike Tyson, Tyson Fury, those sort of dudes. Mine are the Manscaped boxers. Crotch discomfort hurting your game? Fear no more, the kings of crotch comfort, Manscaped, have spent two years designing the most comfortable boxers that you will ever wear. Sleek, soft, comfortable, and flexible. The brand new Boxers 2.0 from Manscaped take your balls to the royal ball throne. The global leaders in below the waist grooming, Manscaped, have a lawnmower 4.0 for the trimming, so you can wear the Boxers 2.0 for the chilling. God. They even trademarked the jewel pouch, so you know it's serious. I think it's time that you invest in your family jewels. So let your bulge breathe and get 20% off this and free shipping by using the code TRUEFOOTY20 at manscaped.com. Let's say that you're on a date and your partner catches that manscaped on the waistband of your undies. It's almost guaranteed to raise some eyebrows, act as a bit of a billboard, and get you on the highway to Pleasure Town. This is thanks to their Lawnmower 4.0, the best electric trimmer in the below the waist grooming market. A date? What's that? You're telling me I don't know either. Manscaped's fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. The Lawnmower 4.0 is waterproof and also has a 4000K LED spotlight so you can have a precise shave. Beyond ball cleaning, Manscaped is focused on ball comforting with the new Boxers 2.0. Boost confidence everywhere knowing that you're wearing the absolute best pack for your sack. These boxes are a game changer and features include the jewel pouch, a pouch designed to cradle your boys in their own special space, lined with perforated performance fabric to keep them well ventilated. It really brings a new meaning to the word jewel position, doesn't it? Is this heaven on earth? More like heaven on girth. <laughs> <laughs> the micro modal fabric is buttery soft and breathable, keeping your cucumber cool. Walk, run, strut, saunter. My father did not strut. Is that The Simpsons? Harry Potter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> These moisture wicking boxes breathe without breaking a sweat. The tagless waistband hugs your body without digging in and it lays flat against your skin to reduce chafing. The front fly gives easy access and makes bathroom breaks quick and efficient so you can get back to grinding vorkaf, you runescape nerds. There are multiple ways for entry and passage to your package. You can even choose from an arrangement of designs and colours and sizes range from small to 3XL. From Caleb Daniel to Sean Darcy, your boys will be in the right hands. I wonder what Luke Shuey's jocks look like. Be proud of your underwear and wear the Manscaped waistband as a badge of honour. Your balls deserve it. Get 20% off and free shipping by using the code TRUEFOOTY20 at checkout. That's 20% off and free shipping on all those products by using our code TRUEFOOTY20. Up your crotch game because once the boxes 2.0 touch your sack, you'll never go back. Let's get into the podcast. <laughs> Welcome back to True Footy Podcast 99. It's a very special one today, Busher. Um, I tried so hard so that the last podcast that we would do together would be the Magic 100. Oh, yeah. Um, but uh, apparently the time is finite and I haven't been able to get it done, um, which which is a bit of a blow. But today, in, in today's podcast, we're going to have a little bit of a, uh, a look back on True Footy and kind of celebrate the 100 episodes. So, Ooh, yeah. first of all, how are you doing? Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, got all right. Yeah, got some work done quickly this morning. Mm. Get to take my grandmother to the hospital this hour, so that'll be fun. Oh, yeah, fun day. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, right. Uh, I similarly, no, not similarly at all. I, um, I'm i dressed like this because I'm going to go to the gym after this and um, packing up my life. I'm selling my car tonight. So it is a, um, it's been a hectic couple Ooh, of weeks. Yeah. Uh, first, first week or two, a second week actually, as a full time content creator has mm. taken it out of me. It's been. Um, yeah, a challenging full-time content creator, part-time removalist. Yeah, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I've just been selling, selling shit uh, left, right, and center. Um, it was funny. One, one bloke messaged me. I was selling my old cricket bat, and he's like, "Oh my god, it's true hoodie," <laughs> <laughs> um, which is funny. Um, so, so you gave him a discount, didn't you? Uh, I can't remember to be honest. I, it was a good price anyway. Yeah. I, sold, I sold a pretty good cricket bat um, that I hadn't really used. I bought it like ten years ago. And um, I bought it for a cricket tournament, played in the tournament, and then haven't played retired. in 10 years. Yeah, retired <laughs> retired on a high. I had a good good end of that series. Ooh, yeah. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, the cherries were all around the edges. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing in the middle of the bat, um, yeah. which is, yeah, typical of me as a batsman. <laughs> um, but first of all, congratulations, Busher. Oh, thank you. On these 100 episodes. Oh, thank 99, you. 99. 99. <laughs> well, we'll do, we'll do one, as we said, uh, we'll do one, you know, while I'm away, we'll do one over like StreamYard or something like that yeah. and get Joycey involved and... Um, yeah, so today's is about more like it's it's dual sided. It's kind of like looking back on the hundred episodes, but also 
Um, it, it has occurred to me, Bush, that people don't really know you that well <laughs> on this channel. And, you know, we've gotten that bloody idiot J- Druzy on like 10 times. and <laughs> That plonker. About, yeah, talked about his life. And then whenever you're on, we just talk about footy. To be fair, he's got a bit more going on than I do at the moment, I guess. Um, no, I'm sure that's not true. I'm sure that's not true. <laughs> he's starting his own business, traveling the world. That's true. Yeah, he's doing very well for himself. And I'm, I'm sure he's listening to this because he's a huge true footy guy. He's Actually, a, he's part of true footy now, <laughs> uh, which has been the evolution of the channel. Um, yeah, this year it's kind of looking like it'll be... A collaboration of, of sorts, like drewsy has got his weekly show and you've been doing yep. your, your fantasy videos yep. as well. As they become relevant. I was going to try and do one last week, but got caught up. So it's one of those things I yeah. didn't want to... Well, not good enough, mate. <laughs> you didn't want to tease it and not do it sort of thing. Yeah, no, that's it. But I milked a couple of weeks worth of things. People will see that today. Oh, wait. Yeah. There won't be today when this oh, video no, is Oh, no, no, that's yeah, right. Yeah. So, yeah, we're recording this. Actually, yeah. that's the thing. I will be in America by the time this comes out. <laughs> so I've been working extremely hard this week to... Uh, get all my videos done for this week and then on Sunday night I'm going to have to get two videos done and this video will also come out while I'm potentially still in the air. Like I'm going to from Perth to Qatar. Um, that's a 12-hour leg. And then um, a two-hour stopover and then 15 hours to Washington, D.C. Oh, yeah. So I'm there for a month. So, uh, but yeah, the next video after this, I will be in America, um, as in I'll be recording probably in my sister's study or i don't i don't really know no, no you're gonna go record right out the front of the bloody big monument in dc mate <laughs> do a, abraham lincoln do just the tips out there <laughs> just the tips at the big tip looking statue in washington dc gross <laughs> uh my cousin had a really good idea he said it'd be funny to like go to all these different countries um and maybe get one of those lapel mics yeah. and and uh, ask people what they know about afl or it's or probably a good video up. concept ask yeah. them to do their predictions yeah. and stuff like that who do you think is going to win out of Adelaide, North Melbourne? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Random person in America. Well, Cardman um, had, did a funny video once where he, uh, or maybe, I think he's done a couple maybe, but uh, uh, it's the first one that I remember, but he he was interviewing random people on Omegle about like the AFL and they're <laughs> yeah. like Americans and Indians. Yeah. And that was so funny. One of them was this Indian guy and uh, Cardi's like, I think he's like, yeah, who's going to win the premiership this year? And there was just this long pause and the guy's like, you are very handsome. <laughs> <laughs> Typical Omegle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that would be fun. Like, I don't know if I'd run into a character like that as such, but <laughs> I think that has potential. I might, I might do stuff like that. Just walk around America in footy shorts and a bloody mm. single mark. Yeah, track the ladies. Oh, yeah. an icebreaker. Yeah. Bloody earth. Wear my Manscaped boxes exactly. as well um, to, to attract <laughs> them. Um, as we alluded to in the ad, you've probably just watched before this podcast began. Exactly. Those are great. Um, easy access. Uh, I noticed yours, your pair that you asked for had a zipper at the back. <laughs> was with that? <laughs> just... Easier to shit when your guts yeah, is acting up, you know. I suppose I have been in with you in a public place where you've needed to go. <laughs> <laughs> Stitch up, but um, yeah, yeah. So times are changing for the channel, Bush. Oh yeah, uh, but we can reflect on when it started. So the back, Perth era, back when you and I met, um, we were in law school. Oh yeah, yeah. So that's ironic how we couple of young men this. going to see Gaz from Geordie Shore at the Newport. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You, so You're you, eating four thousand calories a day at the time. Oh, five. I was hitting 5,000. Oh, As a 19-year-old benching 60 kilos thinking I was going to make it. And probably 60 kilos with terrible form, eating yeah. 5,000 calories a day. Got Dirty 5,000, oh, not a clean. It was, it was. Weren't you uh, eating like spoonfuls of peanut butter if you didn't make your calorie yeah, counts Yeah, yeah. Uh, peanut butter sandwiches with um, banana slices as well. Um, and then a, a, a 1,000 calorie thi- um, mass gainer thick shake. Uh, uh, that was disgusting. <laughs> disgusting. We were so misguided about what it took to bulk up. Because yeah. we were just skinny 19-year-olds. But um, yeah, I remember a lot of painful bowel movements. <laughs> it, was, it was not a time of my life where I was uh, physically healthy. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so you were actually one of my first friends in law school. Oh, yeah. The first per- per- friend I met was um, Josh Noe, yeah. and uh, he was a friend from Bunbury that I knew. Yeah. So I sort of introduced myself to him, and reintroduced yeah. myself. Uh, but I remember, I think you were the second friend that yeah, I met. Because he was sort of, Snowy was pretty sort of extroverted, trying to get to know a bunch of people in like law, trying to get people to go out and stuff. And I was just mm. like, yeah, as soon as I turn 18, I'll come. Because I was <laughs> only 17 at the time. So I was like, yeah, I'll turn 18. I'll start coming out with you guys. Why not? <laughs> Yeah, Snow, he's uh, he was quite a sociable guy. Like he, he was a, a kind of a networker as well. But like, definitely, he he did a great job of because we were in the first ever law school at Curtin as yeah, well. Yeah. So it was a small, intimate group. Yeah. Um, and Snow was really trying to drive the social yeah. side of it. For I remember when he tried to do that coup on the law society. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, that we good. wanted more sports, less academics. That's true. Yeah, 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 that was pretty much the gist of our side of the debate. <laughs> yeah, well, that's because you and I were always destined to become athletes. <laughs> Absolutely, or talk about athletes. Yeah, true. Yeah, we knew what was coming. Yeah, exactly. Um, do you remember the like our first interactions? S- not too specifically, mm. probably like not so much in classes and stuff. Was it more yeah. going out? I remember you. Uh, I think you used to sit in front of me with Gwinnett in legal foundations. Uh, that was my impression of you, and you were under eighteen. And the funny thing was, Snowy was trying to get us to all like um, do it not at cheek or something. Yeah, like that, exactly. And I remember him getting you to post it in the chat, and saying, <laughs> "Guys, let's go to cheek this Wednesday." But you were like six months <laughs> off turning eighteen. <laughs> so that's one of my earliest memories of you. Oh, yeah. um, I'll see you there in six months, guys. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, for the record, never went to cheek once. I've, I've, I've been a few times. I've been once in my life, and it was oh, large. It's- my cheek story is pretty cooked. I got there about nine o'clock at night. Mm. I was in line for three hours, got to the front of the line at like 12.05. Oh. My license had expired at midnight. Oh. They let me in, thank God. Yeah. But after three hours in that line, I, th- I believe I pissed in a shapes box because I needed to pee at one stage. The little plastic oh, bag okay. within yeah, it. right, yeah. For some reason, I yeah. thought you meant inside the club. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> that's desperate. Um, yeah, yeah. It's amazing that they let you in with a unicycle license anyway. But, um, yeah, you did very well there. Ooh, yeah. So we did a long stint at uni. Um, Very long. Yeah. So beginnings. Like, yeah, you did you did law and accounting at first, and then yeah. you switched to law and taxation. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I did law and economics at first, yep. and then I switched to law and marketing. Um, so there was these, huh. these periods where like we'd see each other a lot because we'd be at law school Ooh, in yeah. the city, and then there would be periods where like you'd be doing your Tax taxation yeah. units. I'd be doing my marketing units, at, and I'd be at, well, hmm. we probably both at Bentley. Yeah. Um, but. Uh, the friendship has still stayed strong. Oh, yeah, bloody hell. Like, in fact, you're the... Well, yeah. You're the only one I'm in touch with from law, actually. Uh, yeah, look, yeah, quite much. literally. I yeah. chat to a couple people a little bit. Mudge every now and again. Mm. A few yeah. characters like that. But yeah, mainly you and Mudge. Yeah. Probably the main two. Yeah, that's funny. I've just really reflected on that. I don't <laughs> I don't have like anything to show from my uh, my time at law other than the degree. <laughs> yeah, other than 80 grand in hex and a piece of oh, paper. Yeah, which I haven't started paying off and I have not worked in that profession yet. <laughs> we'll see what happens but, yeah. uh, at the moment. Uh, I just jump through the hoops for the sake of jumping through them, not out of any enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah. What kind of student do you think you were? How would you describe oh, yourself? Atrocious. Yeah? How yeah, so? just like... You saw me in the bloody abacus when we'd attempt to do like... Oh, I know the answer. I just want the audience to get to know you a little bit better. (laughs) Oh, basically, I'm just like easily distracted. Like Mm. the amount of times we'd go to like the computer labs at night going, yeah, we're all going to cram for this exam stuff and we end up doing, which Harry Potter are you quizzes? I don't remember that. (laughs) Like we did, we do like weird... One night we did like weird bunch of quizzes like that. Like which Harry Potter character are you? I'm Ginny. Yeah, which Star Wars character are you? (laughs) That sort of stuff. Well, what is the answer? What what Harry Potter character are you? I, f- I forget. It was quite a while ago. Yeah. I was supposed to be studying, but I think I was like bloody Ron or one of the really? twins or some shit. Yeah, I don't know what I'd be. Uh, Probably a young, serious black. <laughs> <laughs> Why so serious? I don't know. Uh, I think in terms of Star Wars, you are definitely Palpatine. We well, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I am the Senate. Yeah, yeah, very true. Well, yeah. Very true. Um, but yeah, always distracted. Like if you go through my laptop looking at all my notes from all the classes, literally every note ever is just like two lines of just shit I've mm. just written while I could keep attention and then I'd just zone out. Yeah, I, I wasn't much. Uh, I was a, a little bit better, but I was certainly yeah. not a high flyer at law. I, I've always yeah. been one of these people that I just do what I need to do to get mm. by. Yeah, and I, that's the across the, the board. And I think in some ways it serves me well. I think it does serve me well somewhat with YouTube. Um, but I, I never, ever put the... Um, put the foot on the gas to really get high grades or yeah. you know even with content i'm a little bit like that i don't i i'm trying to upload a certain amount of videos each yeah. week and now i can sort of see where it's like i'm probably stretching myself a bit too thin because i uploaded eight videos this week yeah. was my power rankings or my footy tips well thought out was it was it really yeah. i'm on a massive tangent here but that, that's kind of like how i was as, as a student so i would just yeah. get that credit average um like yeah credit gang yeah yeah exactly well i'd go in to exams with like a not bad average because i'd do okay on the assignments but then the exams would just tank my grades a bit literally the amount of exams where i walked out of them going asking like all the people we talked and stuff and they're like oh did you guys know about this concept and they're like yeah that was the whole point of the exams so like yeah i learned that in the exams <laughs> <laughs> oh dear uh, yeah open book i just skim read the book find shit whatever was relevant to my stream of consciousness and just yeah roll with it so that's a good skill that you have there because you are an intelligent guy it's funny it's to think pure like, horsepower if you had tried like to to really engage i did though it's just one of those things i just 
lack that ability to really focus. Like, the yeah. only reason I got as far as I did is just because high school is just such a routine of showing up every day. You're there the eight hours. Yeah. Whereas yeah. uni, you've got to be more self reliant with managing yeah. your time and stuff. And I was just mm. hopeless at it, especially because I'd zone out in classes as well. Yeah. I think that, that was a, a tricky one for me. I think I had a pretty good level of dedication. I, I was seeing a girl, mm. obviously, at uni for a while there who was uh, really academic. So, well, yeah, she would have motivated me. Yeah, she yeah. Would pushed it to the limit. Designated study time and stuff like that. That would have yeah. been, that was good for me. Uh, but then, like, it's a funny thing when you're at uni, and I'm, I'm trying not to fall into this habit now where I don't have a full-time job, where the temptation to just stay up late and wake up late is is there. And I remember nights where I'd probably do, do nothing all day, and then I had an assignment the next day, and I'd be like, all right, I'll just do an all-nighter at the uni. Yeah. Like, can, can you imagine doing that now? Oh, uh, yeah. That, I've had a few rough all-nighties. Oh, have you? Oh, yeah. bloody one of my best ones like that ever was I had a few tax friends that were in the abacus again. I walked in about... 12 30 in the arvo they're all sitting there stressing their asses off doing this thing I'm like what are you boys doing they're like the assignment i'm like it's not due for a couple of weeks and they're like no nah, it's due son to due tonight i believe they said <laughs> so i'm just like oh fuck i got five hours to do this four thousand word assignment i wrote about two and a half two thousand seven hundred ish words yeah funniest part about that so i still got better grades than most of the boys oh, who i'd walked in on and told in, me about it that's insane that's insane <laughs> and if there was ever a story to encapsulate you as a uni student i think it's that one oh yeah <laughs> did very well though very well <laughs> Um, so yeah, we, we were at uni, like I did six and a half years at uni because I did it part time for a long time. I was bit. about six, six and a half, seven, yeah. yeah. Actually, I, was, I think you were a semester longer or something maybe. Yeah, I feel like I was maybe after yeah. you. I, I did graduate for the record um, and now yeah. I sit here unemployed. But um, yeah, I did, I did it part time and uh, I'd say, I think it was four years. It must have been our fourth year at uni where we decided to start True Footy. Fourth of yeah, it was 20, yeah, fourth, yeah. 2017, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, 13, 14, yeah, 15, 16. It was the fifth yeah. year of uni. Oh my goodness, yeah, yeah, because 16 was our first year at the city campus. Do you have uh memories of the, the birth of True oh, As it shaky arms, left just, the <laughs> you should probably hold that camera. That. <laughs> I believe you were talking about it recently on the tw- 20k. You mentioned this mm. one, the first ever podcast, smooth sitting behind the thing for like two yeah. hours. That's a very uh, interesting hand yeah. movement you're making. I think oh, yeah. you should elaborate exactly what you're doing there. <laughs> <laughs> Just really emphasize for the people. He was a very good helper. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, because I had my new camera that I'd used like twice, mm. but I'd bought on a whim like I do with most of my... Is that what we used? Yeah, my old camcorder, yeah. Right. yeah. Because one of you, Joycey had that really old one. I'm like, no, nah, I got a pretty new one, boys. Yeah. I'll use my camera. I was just happy to get some use out of my camera that That's I'd right. blown a few hundred bucks on and not used. True. It would have taken me a while to um to to get a camera for sure. Because it's like one of those things you start doing. It's like, do I want to blow 400 bucks, 500 bucks? There's a unique yeah. on a camera. Um, yeah, the early days, it would just be like, we would do the podcast here. Yeah. Uh, or it was at first my place in Brentwood yep. pre-tripod it was you holding the camera for an hour and a half <laughs> well I do get called tripod sometimes so oh, it kind yeah. of works <laughs> <laughs> well done well done um, yeah and then uh, then we'd come here and do you remember that that like three hour night we did here once doing a draft preview that probably, oh, yeah. probably no one watched the audio I think was effective for half of it and then we used the camera audio for yeah, like half the, of it didn't yeah, we yeah that's right and then I think even the camera footage was there was something wrong with it as well that was yeah one of them cut out or something yeah yeah the, I remember a few teething pains with cameras and stuff that was those were some of the biggest pains in us because you'd put in all that effort and then the cameras died or the audios died and it's just yeah I know nothing about cameras still. Uh, I'm pretty. I'm, I'm just like click record. That's what I mean. I just know the minimum of what I need to do to get to get the job done. And it was the same then, but I well, I didn't know the minimum. I didn't know anything. Sure. Um, so it was a bit of a rocky start. Uh, yeah. So the evolution of it was that uh, Joycey actually came up with it. Yeah, yeah I remember Joycey was the big, which is quite because he was the bigger <laughs> truth Geordie fan of the two of years back then. Uh, back yeah, he then. introduced yeah. me to it. Yeah. 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 The reason I say it's ironic is because he's, he's the one not sitting here right now. <laughs> yeah. um, that is ironic. He's the responsible one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's yeah. a father and a working man now. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Big love to Joycey. Oh, yep. Um, yeah, so the early days of it, I remember, I felt like it probably took like five or six steps. And I think I think I was the one that was the most interested in it. Yeah, because you, you went with it and ran out of all Like, mm. I was sort of just happy to be there, chip in. Yeah. Josie like was that like that as well. But yeah. then as his sort of responsibilities and opportunities started ramping up, he slipped into those obviously because of course, understand you do what you got to do, bloody earth. Yeah, I, I think I just remember it as as me wanting to do more constantly. Because yeah. um, then you sort of expanded into the short form, which is what yeah. really 
pushed it up those next couple levels. That's right. Because the early days, we're, we're all chipping in like 15 bucks a month for like Google. Oh, ad. Yeah. yeah. Shit. So that was actually, uh, I don't know how interesting this is to people. We're going to have a yarn anyway. Yeah. Huh? Uh, that was actually an early strategy for us was around the podcast. We used Facebook ads a lot. And this, I have yep. a memory of doing this sitting next to you in law in, I might have been like, um, was it corporate law or something? <laughs> one of yeah. those with um, that lecturer, I forgot his name. Oh, old mate, the one that gave you... The, he didn't like me, yeah. yeah. Sunglasses guy? <laughs> Yeah, sunglasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah sunglasses. Guy, yeah. He's now the dean. Is he? Yeah. Wow. He's actually. He was actually a great lecturer. Just yeah. Um. Anyway, sitting there next to you, and the the old logo of True Footy was a guy in a tuxedo. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it was yeah. just like clip art yeah. that we just put there, and then somebody photoshopped um him holding a footy, yeah. which is still irrelevant. <laughs> but uh, I remember sitting there with you, and I was running Facebook ads in class yeah. um, because I thought that was how probably you while I was playing online poker next yeah. to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Before um, they outlawed it. Yeah, true. Curse you, Nick Xenophon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, that was an early strategy, and I used to use Google AdWords on my on our yeah. podcast. Yeah, well. AdWords was the big yeah. one I remember. So it was kind of like paying for views, but they were actual views. So you yeah. can you can buy views uh, synthetically, and that's just your your, yeah. your uh, account goes up by a thousand or whatever. Yeah. The yeah. algorithms are cracked onto that these days. Yes, Google AdWords will actually promote your videos to yeah. your audience. So um, we invested a fair bit of money for a little while. Ooh, yeah, I mean for uh, for uni students. Yeah, it was like fifty. It's like sixty bucks a month yeah. between the four of us for yeah an episode a month. Yeah. That was um, yeah, it's a reasonable amount. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then that was like early days. I remember seeing views but no comments. Yeah, which means that like people were finding the video but not necessarily enjoying it. Yeah, probably two parts of that. Google AdWords won't always get it right, and, and yeah. B, the content was probably sucked back then. <laughs> let's be real, yeah. uh, particularly the quality. Um, did you think back then that when we started it, we'd be sitting here six years later? I didn't think it'd be as big as it is. That's for sure. Yeah. Like, I didn't think it'd be a thing where it's viable for you to make a living off. It's viable for me to buy a couple of coffees a month. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. sort of thing. But that's right. Uh, yeah. The thing is, we there wasn't really an AFL YouTube scene at the time we started so we didn't really know what the potential upside was mm. that's right i think my early memories were i was vaguely aware of this guy called Kados. yeah i was say kados was really the only yeah. one i think around and even then he was sort of already trying to go with his own name rather than yeah ben footy that's true exactly yeah. right so yeah there's a, there's a difference between yeah. true footy and caden um and caden's become a, a good yeah. friend as well, well yeah. which is um nice to look back on but yeah I, I remember just probably only really watching his videos to see what did well early days because yeah. I, I wasn't a watcher of youtube in general and then it was probably like 2019 he started to take off i genuinely started watching his videos um and then there was just this yeah. like little ripple where um a heap of us just started yeah. making videos yeah. consistently 29 2019 was a big year for us actually yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I don't know if you recall. And I think some of the growth was made off two cricket videos I did. Mm. Oh, yeah, the cricket videos did well. Yeah, yeah. There was a big Indian audience. We had a remember, huge yeah. influx of Indian viewers, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which are probably long gone. They probably yeah. just came for those videos and left. Yeah, yeah. Um, True cricket spin-off, mate. Yeah. Probably more money in that than footy. I reckon our fourth podcast was an Ashes cricket review. Yeah, we did oh, do a couple God. of early cricket stuff. Man, what, what, yeah. what were we thinking? It was, it was my fault. <laughs> we were figuring it out. And I'm pretty sure that one, the audio, the visual didn't work, so we used the audio only. Uh, mm. Yeah, I remember uploading a couple of ones with black screens or whatever. Yeah, oh my God. It's It, <laughs> it makes me cringe to think about now, but uh, sometimes you just got to start and fumble your way through yeah. it, and then um, eventually yeah. it'll be something something resembling yeah. professional. It's obviously still got a yeah. long way to go. But but yeah, about, by about then, you could sort of see the quality had picked up on the channel as well. Like, was it the... Yeah. 2019 draft do you mean Lenny was that the one with Brayshaw Chera in there Brayshaw Chera was 17 oh yeah okay um, so that was even earlier because that was a pretty because I rewatched that podcast the other week and that was pretty good quality I thought yeah okay that's good one that's with good Lenny. to hear that's reassuring yeah. Uh, yeah I think somewhere along the line like I my idea was that uh, the podcast just uploading the podcast relentlessly and nothing around it was a bad strategy to grow and mm. I, I'm glad that I realised yeah. that so I started making like little Music videos. Yeah. Do you remember those? I used to make like a, a Fremantle pump up video, a yeah. West Coast pump up video, um, etc. And that that got a bit of attention. Oh, I should have got you instead of the Birds of Tokyo, mate. Yeah, except it wasn't my music. <laughs> I, I used uh, on a Big Eagles one. I used uh, "Not Giving In" by John Newman and oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, Rudimental. Yeah. Rudimental. Yeah, yeah that, that was a good song. Yeah, the highlight clips. Yeah, yeah. Mm, yeah. So I did highlight clips and stuff like that, and eventually, like. It seemed that people were coming for the for the other stuff, the smaller stuff I did, and then they would 
discover the podcast yeah. and then you get a percentage of those who didn't hate it <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> to, to what eventually what it is now from what i could later. sort of tell just sort of with the few videos i've uploaded recently i'd say they'd get about 300 500 views mm -hmm. whereas yours are getting like your five six thousand or whatever so i think that's like the ten percent in mm. watching my stuff's so the 10 percent that gets around the podcast possibly that yeah I, i've even noticed that some of my every like fourth or fifth vid will tank for some reason uh -huh. um the audience really is a student knows what it wants to watch and what it doesn't yeah um but that doesn't mean you don't experiment yeah. with stuff so um yeah we'll just keep at it that's all yeah. you can do um what's what do you think has been the biggest challenge for you as a content creator not just like in your video i'm talking about the entire span of truth yeah. what, what have you found um difficult about it well like even like just editing a little like sometimes i'll just get like obsessive like it'll take me so long to edit sometimes cause i'll just get like keep re-watching it and just mm. tweaking it and stuff like i can't just sort of move on to the next thing i sort of really fo hyper focus on one thing for a bit then you do uh, that's interesting because like you were having it. focus issues through uni yeah but like it's weird it's a hyper focus it's like a thing every okay. now and again your brain just sort of feels like it clicks and you mm. can get shit done mm. but like interesting even when i don't have that when i'm editing though like i'll get obsessed with like oh i've got to cut this here or whatever like yeah uh, that's good yeah see i'm the i'm the opposite in the, well I, I do get into that mode when i'm editing you have to but uh i i'm not a perfectionist if something's yeah. a little bit wrong i'm just like fuck it i need to get this video out yeah I, if, if i reach to a point where it's like i've got as good as i can get it without mm. fucking around too much i will yeah but i sort of will fuck around a little bit to sort of get it mm. half where i want it what about in podcasts and, and your opinions and stuff one thing i have noticed about you actually mm. since we've started true footy is that your opinions are a lot more neutral than they used to be mm. and a lot more um less steadfast in in thinking one thing and and, uh, and open to um having your opinion change quite easily is that something you feel yeah i, for I sure. feel like back in the day when we used to have these debates you and i used to have like fierce debates sometimes <laughs> yeah. um which that doesn't happen yeah. anymore but um even like on the podcast do you think subconsciously because your opinions are subject to scrutiny now they're in the public domain that has influenced the way you think about footy? Probably a little bit for sure, but I'd also just sort of say it's just sort of maturation and growing yeah. up sort of thing. True. That's a good point. Sort of generally, I've sort of thought a lot of things I'd hit maturity early, but then there was a lot of things that came a lot later than mm. they would for some people. It's sort of a bit weird in that way, I think, in terms yeah. of my maturity. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, I, th I suppose it is a, a maturity thing as well. But um, yeah, the scrutiny is definitely a factor as well because you know... There's mm. some nerd who knows everything, but like, nah, you're full of shit, dude. Yeah, yeah, you cannot, um, on the internet, you cannot, like, and I try not to do this as much as possible, but you can't just, like, run with an idea without fact-checking. Yeah, uh, um, unless your name's Kane Corns. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But, yeah, I, I know that, like, whenever I say anything um, wrong or anything, it'll get pulled mm. up in comments, and I think that's actually a really positive thing. Uh, because, definitely. Um, it will refine me every now and then. Mm. And every time I upload a video and, and then I get some criticism mm. and it's happened as recently as this week, mm. then I'll consider it and I think, have I yeah. got this wrong? Like if, if mm. all these people are saying this is wrong, yeah. then I, I look at that and I pivot and I think, and, I, and there's times where I haven't changed my mind. Yeah. Um, the most recent one was putting Adelaide quite low in the power mm. rankings. And upon reflection, yeah. I, know, I know there's a lot of people disagreeing with it, but at the same time, I tried to do it mm. based on exposed data. Yeah. At the moment, Adelaide haven't really, yeah, yeah. not to go on a tangent, but... Uh, yeah, so that's one thing I find challenging. That's probably like, because that's the thing, the, it's a balance between like listening to the audience and sticking to your convictions as well. Like, yeah. Because if you're just sort of someone that ping pongs mm. between whatever people are telling you, that's no good either. You just sort of got to be able to form your own opinion, but that's, yeah. be prepared to take in as much information as possible to make it as good an opinion as possible, I guess. That's a great point. And the thing is, as well, with now, I'm doing twice daily at the moment. I don't know how long I'll sustain that, but. <laughs> I'm uploading so much content and I'm repeating myself a fair bit with certain things. And then people, I think, in the comments are saying, oh, you hate this team. Or, why, why are you so <laughs> harsh on this team consistently? But I have to be consistent in <laughs> yeah. the video. I can't on a Monday say that, you know, this team's underperforming. And then by the Wednesday, I'd be like, nah, they're, they're actually all right. Yeah. Like, you just can't do that. You have to stay consistent as much as anything. Definitely. Um, and, and yeah, the fact that I don't change my mind, I think is a positive thing. Hmm. Um, obviously, I'm wrong. Then I, re yeah. then I, I readjust. But um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so the negative <laughs> scrutiny at times is actually a positive. I don't, I don't uh, think very, very, very rarely does it stray into like uh, abuse and stuff like mm. that. Um, the well, that reminds me of one early challenge that we had. Old mate, what I think, I've forgotten his bloody name, <laughs> yeah. the, the dude who tried to expose us and all that jazz. 
Yeah, I, I don't even want to. Yeah. Like, it's been so long that it's yeah. so funny. I, I think yeah. he's still around. I don't even want to like give him too much yeah. oxygen because this is like yeah. something he wants. But yeah, there's a, there's a young fella around there who um he's notorious for doing the same thing to a bunch of people. Yeah. It wasn't just us. Oh, he's done it to other YouTubers, has he? Uh, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember going and seeing his channel and. The amount of people that made exposed videos about him uh, was quite funny. Uh, like he he just loves the argy bargy and um, yeah. yeah. So long story short, for anyone who doesn't know what we're referring to, basically someone like was mad that somebody that wasn't us banned them from the Discord, and then he started dislike botting the channel. That was uh, like 2019, and uh, yeah, got some abusive comments oh, yeah. that I quickly realized I was like, oh, there's something something yeah. funny here. There's like four in a row people telling me to kill myself. I'm like, this is obviously <laughs> something ridiculous. Some edgelord. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was long, long gone. Oh, yeah. That issue. Yeah, I'm glad he sailed off into the sunset. I didn't even mind it that much because <laughs> it didn't really affect the channel at all no. as much as he wanted it to. Because most of the people who are probably watching go, "Who the fuck's this idiot? What's he <laughs> crapping on about?" <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, yeah, no. that that <laughs> last thing we'll say is that exposed video was just like incoherent. No. There wasn't even anything to say because no. we didn't do anything. <laughs> do you get recognised in public? Yeah, I've had a few. One at the forty, one at metros, and. One or two on the street. Yeah, Metro's for some reason yeah. is a massive... Like, it's our demographic. I suppose so, but <laughs> yeah. it doesn't make sense to me yeah. how much it happens at Metro's. <laughs> or in Fremantle generally. Yeah. I don't go to Metro's that much. I haven't been to Metro's in like a year and before. I haven't that, been like four, five years. I am 29, so it's, yeah. uh, I shouldn't be anywhere near Metro's. But I went, uh, yeah. I went. I got caught up in a work strength that we got a bit <laughs> loose. Um, so that's, we kind of yeah. went as a joke. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I got to make a Metro's come back at least once more in my life. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah. Don't know if I'll be thirty weeks straight again, like I was at nineteen. But yeah, right, yeah. thirty weeks for being straight. Yeah, it's <laughs> um, personal best. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, getting recognised is, is um, at, at first like it was mind blowing. Yeah, I thought it was pretty sick. The first time it happened, um, I think I said this in the other pods, so I won't repeat too much of what I said, but um, yeah, I think it happened about 600 subscribers at the grand final. But it's funny how much it happens in Fremantle where, you know, the audience isn't that big, you uh, know what I mean? It's not. It's certainly nowhere near, you know, like we're actually famous, but um, for the amount of people that see, that say G'day in Fremantle itself, uh, it surprises me considering it's an Australian-wide uh, audience and I think most of them are Victoria anyway. Uh, um, that, that was interesting to me. I do remember... Um, once after the Eagles lost to North and I was cap- copping so much shit uh-huh. um, that this was back in 2021. That that was the first time I was really nervous about being seen in public. I remember <laughs> having a bit of anxiety about it, which is stupid. Like yeah. I'd go to the shops and uh, yeah. uh, I've probably even recognised it at my local shops like once or twice mm. ever. But I remember being like, wanted to, I think I wore a baseball kit, like a, celeb- <laughs> like a guy who thinks he's a celebrity. Yeah, yeah. don't want to get seen by the paparazzi. You have the diversion car drive in and then... Yeah, but it was just this weird a- anxiety yeah. response, I think, as much as anything, that it, that I suddenly yeah. felt that no one liked me a little bit. Not to sound too... Oh, just because your team had a shit performance. Yeah, I don't, I don't mean in my personal yeah. life, like yeah. everyone didn't like me. I just yeah. meant that it's funny, like sometimes with the ebbs and flows of True Footy, sometimes the, the feedback is really positive. And, and most oh, yeah. of the time most it of is. We have a very supportive subscriber yeah. base, which I really appreciate. Um, but then sometimes, you know, I'll <laughs> upload a footy tips where people just hate who are tipped hmm. and it's not that they ever get abusive and to be honest i think people are very good at disagreeing with me on there yeah. in terms of respectfully disagreeing with me i think it's yeah good. the dialogue but still sometimes when you get a negative loop and it's just hmm. 50 comments are all the same negative sentiment that yeah. it actually makes me think oh it, it's just really yeah. important to to stay stable like that yeah um, and just because the eagles lost to north and people were telling me i'm a flog and talentless <laughs> and stuff like that because my team lost yeah. um that that yeah that impacted me enough to be like didn't yeah. like not really anxious to go to the yeah. shops or anything but certainly yeah. second guessing yeah. uh looking anyone in the eye and stuff like yeah. that which is which is dumb but um that was certainly great. if they're gonna give you shit for that they should give you shit for collingwood performances josh carmichael <laughs> 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 not mm. the eagles performances yeah yeah my own performance as a <laughs> um as a utility for collingwood um <laughs> uh, for the record, though, nobody's given me shit in public, which yeah. is nice. Everyone's been really, really nice. Yeah, I've only had wholesome. Oh, you're bushing yeah, too. Just, just like, yeah. Just supportive stuff. Yeah. They're not starstruck or anything. It's just, yeah. hey, I watch your channel. Like, that's, yeah. that's, um, that's really nice. Yeah, bloody hell. What about you as a football fan, Bush? You, uh, you're you a <laughs> avid Fremantle fan. Oh, yeah. um, why Fremantle? God. Sort of more like family, sort of. Mm. My family's big Freo family, like. Both sides have lived in Frio for like probably almost 100 years. Mm. Was your dad an Eagle before? Eagle? Eagles fan? 
before. I Philadelphia. went for them for a little bit, I think, when the Eagles came out first, but Not then an as actual soon. Eagle. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think he was briefly an Eagles fan before the Docs came out, but then Doc is yeah. the East Fremantle. Even though it's not directly East Fremantle, like our family, three out of the four sides of my grandparents' family is all East Fremantle nuts. Like, yeah, yeah. My grandma's twin sister's on the Legends game ball this year for East Fremantle. That's cool. My great granddad was like the bookkeeper there. Wow. My mum's cousins like the on the board of selectors, all sort of stuff. So, mm. a lot of connection in the footy for East Fremantle there. So True. that sort of, I'm a big Freo person generally. Like I've. Like, I don't say I'm from Perth, I say I'm from Fremantle. Like, yeah. Yeah, right. Like, it's a bit of a Freo thing, but... Yeah. Yeah, we've sort of our own breed. Mm. Yeah, so for anyone over um, over East as well, like, we are... Both of us, we're south of the river in Perth. So there's yep. kind of, like, this divide in Perth where you're either north or south of the yeah. river. And we are west of the freeway that runs through the middle of yep. Perth. And, um, yeah, so southwest... It's a very Fremantle-dominated area. Oh, yeah. And I'll say as well, for anyone who doesn't live in Perth and won't understand this... I don't know any Eagles fans. Huh? Like, I worked at Bunnings, right? So, you had a uh, good sort of cross-section of society. Yeah, there. Yep. I reckon there's about two other Eagles fans there, maybe three in the eight years I worked there that I actually got to know properly. And maybe huh? there's the odd one that I just never found yeah. out an Eagles fan. But it was like 98% Fremantle. Yeah. At uni, we went to Curtin, that's south of the river. That was easily more than half Fremantle. More than half Fremantle, yeah. But there were a few. I, yeah. I can think of a few Eagles fans from Yeah, I think because they were north of the river people driving down yeah. to, to Curtin. Um, they were the only ones that I remember being Eagles fans. Yeah. But it's, uh, it is unbelievably dominated by Fremantle fans. I just assume yeah. that when I meet someone now that likes footy, I just assume they're a Fremantle fan. Uh, it's well, crazy. this region, it'd be a regional thing like this sort of... Southwest yeah. Perth region. Which is not something that I realised before I moved to Perth. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. I'm not from Perth. I'm from Bunbury where it was a bit yeah. more even. Uh, and then I moved to the Middle East for AS five years. And when I... So I came back to Perth at 19. That was my first taste of Perth. And I thought there would be more Eagles fans than Dockers yeah. fans. And I think technically there are. But... Yeah. Uh, there would be. <laughs> in terms of how I've met, yeah. how many I've met, I've just met so few Eagles yeah. fans in my time here. But even like north of the river generally, I barely know my way going anywhere yeah. north of the river. I'm just like... Yeah. May as well be bloody Geraldton. <laughs> it feels like you're in a different state yeah. when you go north of the river. Oh, yeah. Um, I, and I, the thing I like about our area, this is a weird tangent to go on, but <laughs> I think I like about this area, it's very uh, open and, and windy. And um, yeah. Whereas if you go to certain suburbs, like I feel like north of the river is very packed. Yeah. Packed in and, and smaller roads, it feels yeah, like. Yeah, trying to cram a lot in. Yeah, that's the way it feels. Whereas uh, like this sort of area, like, um, well, I just moved out of Melville, so I can tell yeah. people I, I will live there. But um, not that people are going to come banging <laughs> on my door anyway, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's uh, th- it. Is a really nice part of Perth. Yeah, like I, like I travel and like live in other places for a little bit, but ultimately, when I'm settled, I settle here. I think. Mm. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, that's the next thing I need to ponder. I've just <laughs> packed up my life into two suitcases, sold <laughs> um, sold everything. Uh, except I, my cars <laughs> getting sold today. Yeah. Selling, I even sold FIFA twenty three last night. <sighs> Uh, sold my camera last night. You're not taking your PlayStation with you? No, I sold that as well. Yeah. Uh, that's as much the habit thing as... Like, yeah. it's impractical to also take my PS4 yeah. uh, across two continents. Yeah. Three continents, actually. But, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's also a habit thing that I want to I want to avoid playing too much PlayStation and stuff like yeah. that because uh, I've got so much other shit to do. Mm. I don't want to go there and relax too much. Yeah, for sure. Um, How, like, with that, like... Do, have you, put, you haven't really put a timeline on it, have you? No, no. Uh, uh, it, it is open ended because yeah. I keep changing my mind as well. Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, I just kind of wanted to get away from Perth. Yeah. Like, there's more push factors for me mm. than Paul. And um, I say that acknowledging that I've got family here who I very dearly love and some good yeah. friends too. But I think it's like a late 20s thing. Yeah. Um, you know, like, I. It's the time to try this sort of shit. 100%. Yeah. And so it, I turned 30 as well. So this yeah. is the last time I can get the visa to, to do a working holiday yeah. in America. Oh, sorry, in, in England. Yeah. Um, but I just felt like as much as I liked my job at Bunnings, I felt like I was very much in the loop of the, doing the same shit. Stagnant, yeah, definitely. Mm. And the it actually occurs to me that Bunnings was the best thing about my life for a while. And then <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of just felt like my life was a little bit mm. over. I know that sounds really dark. Oh, what, leaving? No, nah, so this is leading up to uh, the decision to leave. Yeah. Was I felt like the fun part of my life was over and mm. I was just existing now. Yeah. Um, which, you know, it's still maybe part of my future, but I, I, I think right now I've made the decision to get away from that. Um, had some toxic sort of situations with, with a girl um, <laughs> as well, which was a bit sour. I don't really want to go into it, but yeah. it was, um, that was another sort of push 
reason for me. It didn't uh, didn't end well. Um, and then you know, yeah. friends are just scattered. You know, yeah, like, everyone's got their own lives these days. Like, I wish I saw more of all sorts of people, but uh, it's just mm. so hard. Like, lots of my friends have since had kids. Mm. And a lot of them are FIFO. A lot of them are just working lots. Yeah, hundred percent. That's just something that hits you in your late twenties. I, I yeah. talked about this recently on the channel. A few people commented saying that it resonates mm. with them as well. Um, and this shouldn't be the hardest part of your life. I actually watched a podcast not that long ago where um, they talk about... I actually found this really reassuring, even though it's a really negative message, mm-hmm. but they said that the 25 to 39 bracket for a man is actually the, often the worst years of his mm-hmm. life. And I actually felt a little bit relieved by that because uh, since I turned 25 or 26, my life's been a bit shit. Mm-hmm. And I say that completely acknowledging that I'm very privileged and that my life is very, very good in most superficial senses. But in terms of like fulfillment, like the dating marketplace is yeah. cooked right now for mm. both men and women yeah. um, for a variety of reasons, social media, just changing behaviors or, yeah. or not even changing behaviors. But um, mm. that that su- sucks. Um, it's hard to, to meet someone these days. And um, it's, it's hard because this is the time of our lives. In theory, we have more disposable income and we can travel and, yeah. and do all this stuff. But uh, finding... Finding a purpose as a guy in his late twenties who's single is is actually really tricky. Have Ooh, yeah. you, you I've, felt? A little I've been bit feeling like that this? hard. Like, yeah, especially like since finishing law school, I've sort of I tried a few different paths. Like, mm. I dabbled in teaching. I mm-hmm. didn't last two weeks at my first prac. Why is that? I just hated it. Every morning I was waking up sick to my stomach. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. I like I didn't think I'd feel that way going into it, but mm. like, but I did get stitched up by COVID a little bit with that. Right. Because literally, I started the teaching degree like 2020. Mm-hmm. So I was going through my coursework all normal. COVID was starting to happen and stuff. They didn't say a word about our first practicals. So I'm just like, yeah, COVID, they're not going to let a bunch of prac students into schools. They're going to try and keep it as contained as possible. Mm. Literally, the Wednesday before I was supposed to be at Melville High School, I get the phone call going, yep, you're going to Melville High School on Monday. Yeah. So I didn't get a chance to talk to the teacher who I was working with beforehand oh, okay, at all. Okay. I rolled up on the Monday. She sort of gave me a rough plan on how we we're going to play the two weeks. Mm. So I sort of went home with that plan in my mind. Then I rolled up on the Tuesday and it got completely changed because apparently she's the only competent geography teacher. Oh, so she got given the year 12 geography class. So instead of me getting the smart, easy to work with year nine class, I got the dead shit year eight class. <laughs> dead shit year eight. Yeah. I was one of those. I was a teacher. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. But okay. literally I had a student walk out of one of my classes. I didn't even realize. Oh. Yeah, like, because wow. I did the Friday, it was like Friday last period, so I'm like, yeah, I'll get the laptops, let them fuck around on the laptops or whatever, <laughs> put them right by the front door of the class, I'm like, yep, yeah, all right, whoever needs a laptop, go up, get one. Yeah. This kid just walked out, I didn't even realise, about oh, five right. minutes later, the teacher camp goes, where'd this kid go? I'm like, don't know. It's a bit harsh, like, yeah. you don't even know the kids yet. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, but then she was like, yeah, half these kids are probably on Buddy Dexies and Speed yeah. shit. Yeah, that's a, that's a real problem as well. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, a friend of mine is like a counsellor for a school and just the amount of stuff that kids are getting up to these days. Sure. It, uh, yeah, it, oh, it yeah. outshadows what was happening at our age, that's for sure. Yeah, definitely. So I was just, that was not for me. That was enough to push me into getting the rest of the law shit finished. Mm. So that's why I did the bare unpaid minimum to get admitted <laughs> yeah. from that point onwards. Well, that's good that you got admitted. Um, yeah. You That's an achievement in itself. Is that something that you would uh, consider doing like career-wise? Like, what, uh, what do you think the future kind of holds? Well, one thing I am sort of looking into at the moment, I probably won't elaborate too much, is but Army Reserve as a lawyer. Yeah? yeah. As a lawyer? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Because cool. I, so I just sort of was looking into it generally because mm. I'm on the Soundlink at the moment. So I was, and it's like you get credits for being in the Army Reserve. I'm like, oh, the Army Reserve. Just sort of Google it, had a bit of a read. And I'm like, Army Reserve lawyer? Yeah. They make this much a day? I was like, man, yeah, that could work because it's like flexible schedules as well because it's reserved. So okay, you yeah. could take like a three-month posting, make a bunch of money and then mm. – do fuck all for six months yeah <laughs> travel or whatever yeah that sounds good so once i'm my knee's good enough to pass a physical that's something i'll probably explore a bit mm. other than that i don't really have any direct interest in practicing maybe a bit of volunteering sort of thing mm-hmm. but no sort of paid opportunities that really interest me because the work-life balance is just shit yeah. or if you're working in like crim or fam you're dealing with buddy knobheads yeah okay cool well you got a bit of a direction there that's mm. cool um, I think one thing, like, as part of this thing of, of getting to know you a little bit better, Bush, is that um, people don't really know that you had a quite a rough year last year, hey? Uh-huh. Um, it wasn't something that was <laughs> going to find its way onto True Footy because <laughs> it was very personal. But um, you, you actually talked about this in your yep. in your fantasy video. Loaded it. It, was, it was good to see yeah. you open up a little bit. Because I was sort of... It's the context that's what's got me into fantasy bits. Yeah. All the... 
issues the last couple of years. Sure. So talk me through that. Like, what, what's well, the logical connection there? Well, I think it all really began when I did the knee. Yeah. Like, ACL. Yeah. And just was not able to really exercise for like until now, basically. Mm-hmm. So like, as Drewzy repeatedly tells everyone, Drewzy's athlete came all that stuff. Check him out. But anyway, like, mm. just like exercise gets the dopamine flowing helps yeah. you sort of promote positive thoughts sort of keeps you a bit healthier so not having that sort of put me on the uphill battle from the beginning mm. and then just sitting around waiting for dealing with all that yeah you, so you you did your acl uh when exactly august 21 21 and you had your surgery like three december months 22 yeah yeah that's ridiculous so it was almost 18 month wait what was that like it was like with a torn or ruptured acl it was pretty much in spent like being in limbo like yeah, I sucks. wasn't able to sort of commit to anything but like most mm. stuff I didn't want to do, like wanted to do, I couldn't commit to. Mm. Sort of difficult because I didn't, like I've said, I didn't really want to do the law stuff. I was probably more interested in manual labor type work, make good money, like FIFO type work. Yeah. Just yeah. make a bit of quid, mm. that sort of thing. So that sort of held that up. And then yeah. I was just sort of lying around. Then mid-2022, my grandmother passed away, mm-hmm. which in of itself was just sudden and a shock because she was – healthy happy as larry yeah that's terrible and she had these panic attack things every now and again mm. yeah that's the yeah. tough thing with with grief sometimes is all the time is like when it's sudden and you don't see it yeah. coming that that really makes it tough when you yeah. contrast it with mm. like i've been in both situations before and when you have some time to prepare it makes a big difference yeah. right? i think it just adds an extra layer to that grieving process you were quite close with you Right. Well, I didn't talk to her as much as I like because she lived down yeah. in like yonder up Pinjarra type area and she was, but she was an incredible woman like and in terms of all the people in my family like her personality sort of resonated the most like with mine like mm. we were like the brainy ones of the family yeah uh, I took my own ironic horde. no I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah she was like incredible she nearly won was nearly a state politician she was within 500 votes of mm-hmm winning a seat that's typically a very safe liberal seat and she mm. was labor she nearly won one of the safest liberal seats wow as a labor person yeah. within 500 votes which is pretty cool impressive she was a, in the local council for down there for like nearly 20 years did you speak at a funeral or did you yeah i, I remember seeing yeah. the post that yeah you i did on facebook like i did do a speech at a funeral yeah, yeah okay yeah. Oh, good on you I knew um, she would have wanted me to. Yeah, yeah, that's nice, mate. Um, yeah. I think yeah. I have spoken at funerals and there's been times where I haven't been able to speak and, yeah. like, it's a very difficult thing to do. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very difficult thing to do. The one sort of thing that sort of gave me any sort of confidence with both times I've had to speak at funerals recently is just sort of natural public speaking ability. I know this is, mm. like, my gift almost. Mm. So it was, like, sort of mm. something I could lean into. Like, the oral presentations was one thing that helped me get through uni as well. Whenever yeah, I that's them, true. They were a nice little bump. One of those like unforeseen skills that you actually get out of uni without realising. <laughs> yeah. But so, I've always sort of had the do presentations and stuff. Mm-hmm. That's always been a strength. True, true. So how, how long after your, your uh, grandma passed away did your mum pass away? About three months afterwards, three months, yeah. yeah. So just sort of like when I was sort of starting to get my head around grandma, mm-hmm. sort of, I was sort of working with, like mum was going to help me as well, like sort of start getting back in a direction because mm-hmm. i was sort of a bit static at that stage yeah Are you close with your mum yeah 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 like that was another difficult thing with all that's just like because i've never not lived at home so mm-hmm. like even other like people i know have sort of had time away from the family unit like mm-hmm. whereas i haven't so it's sort of a bit more of a change yeah, yeah so that that like that's the other thing that part of it is it's um not just the pain of losing someone that you love it's your daily routine would have just mm. been, it would have been immediately in your face like as soon yeah. as you wake up um your life's mm. different yeah. right like a lot more responsibilities as well yeah for me specifically that's right um like from my own experience i lived in a different country to mum when she died but uh i went back home to perth and then the rest of my family went to dubai where they all lived yeah and i think the immediate aftermath for them would have been oh i wouldn't say harder because i think i had my own challenges as well but like being there every day and, and yeah. witnessing that absence whereas for me it was mm. like i came back to perth yeah. and like my i wouldn't say my life is the same but um without having it right there yeah, yeah. you could sort of different. in your mind she's almost still in dubai but yeah. you know she's not but yeah like, so I don't just know. in the way you conduct your day today yeah i don't know if it made it better or worse to be honest i think it probably just mm. took longer to um yeah. to absorb as well uh but you spoke at your mum's funeral so yep. that was uh that was incredible mate like mm. i was obviously there and i didn't um I don't think I knew that you were speaking, but you spoke with a very, a lot of strength that I could not have done. I, I know that yeah. having been in that situation myself, there was absolutely no chance I had the ability to do yeah. that. 
Um, but not only did you speak, you spoke very confidently and you wowed the crowd with a few jokes <laughs> in your typical bush, bush of fashion. Yep. Um, so I'd tip my hat off to you as, as well, yeah. mate. Uh, you, you referenced some responsibility. So, um, yeah, what, what effect has that well, on your life now? Because I've got a special needs sister. I've sort of taken mm-hmm. a lot of that, like, guardianship, of sort of managing her finances, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Even my grandmother, because mum was sort of like the responsible one for her, put her in the home, that sort of thing. Yeah. So now I get calls from the bloody aged care centre asking if they can, basically asking my permission to wipe my grandmother's ass. It's like, yeah, not literally, well, I'm exaggerating, but yeah, yeah. it's like every time they change a prescription on it, they ring me, it's like, oh, we'll do. It's like, she hasn't lost her marbles yet, fucking ask her. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. pretty much sort of my attitude with it. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's added this all this complicated um, yeah. Yeah, pressure, I guess, yeah. and responsibility on you. How are you feeling with that? Do you think do you think it's helped you? Just a little, like I mean, I've always known I'd have to take on this stuff at some stage. Yeah? So like, I've always been prepared in my head to take on my sister and all that sort of stuff. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. like even cause Dad's still in. He was a bit more like I he he was off to do my. I'm like, no, nah, I'm gonna have to do this all eventually anyway just let me do it now yeah you're dealing with your own shit trying to keep the business afloat yeah the, the thing with your mum mm. as well was like it was very sudden wasn't it mm. so literally it, it was there was some like similarities to my own mother but um you know she, she was sick for a while like when i first yeah. met you you had said she'd previously had cancer yeah, yep. um and then you know there was some down yeah. periods right and then like yeah well, right before it happened though she was all right yeah well it, literally like about a month or two before it happened she'd gone to like the check like the cancer specialist or whatever and they couldn't find any it was like the first time yeah. in ages they couldn't find any but i think it was just the strain of 12 years of t- trying all the different mm. chemos and all the different combinations of things mm. and she copped a rough case of covid a few months oh, before yeah. it happened as well that sucks which is the heart attack thing you're seeing a lot of people mm. with the heart attack yeah that's that's yeah. my mum as well mm. the heart attack thing uh probably related yeah. to chemotherapy you, yeah. You yeah yeah mum was on and the thing is with mum like because she was good, but this the thing she was currently on was like the last thing they could try. So once it got bad again, mm-hmm. that would have been it. Okay. So that I never knew that, but when it all happened, I got told that, and that yeah. sort of gave me a bit of closure about it. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Were you kind of sheltered a little bit from from things? Yeah, like they that? hit yeah. a lot of it. I knew initially, like when it, she first got the diagnosis course, in yeah. like year ten. Mm. But then, yeah, beyond that, they sort of kept it quiet to me. Like, I never knew where it had spread and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, her sore back, I just assumed it was from getting older and stuff. Mm-hmm. Not mm-hmm. a tumour or whatever. Yeah, jeez, yeah. Yeah, that's all very understandable. Um, I was the youngest in my family so I, and living in a different country, so I was kind of sheltered a lot from it. Mm. And I think, in hindsight, for me personally, I think that worked well. Mm. Um, it made, like, the, the event a lot more shocking. Yeah. I think my sisters and dad maybe were more... Mm prepared for it than i was but um because you got the call and you were on the plane to yeah. germany yeah, yeah exactly yeah mum was in germany um at the time that was where the specialist was yeah so yeah literally just on a flight within a few hours mm. being told um but yeah i think i think had i known what i was flying there to you yeah. know via dubai to zurich to then a car to freiburg yeah. i would have I don't know how I would have coped with that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I think I was in absolute denial because, yeah. you know, um, to clarify, she was still, she yeah. was all right when I was on the way there. She yeah. had a heart attack and um, it, things were going to be okay. So, yeah. yeah, I think the way it unfolded, mm. not to talk about me, sorry, I'm just trying to relate, but. Well, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I, th- I think being sheltered a little bit yeah. helped me, but even mm. though it made it a bit more, maybe not more devastating in the moment, but it, it made it harder to process in the moment. I yeah. think I think it's something I'm grateful for mm. overall. Are you um? How are you with your dad? You're pretty close. Yeah, as well? we've we've sort of closed the ranks a bit because he mm. he copped the news rough. He because mm. literally the because it happened on a Monday. On the Sunday, mum dropped him at the airport because he had business in Singapore. Mm-hmm. So he flew up to Singapore. Then Monday night, he's getting the phone call from the people at dancing telling him what's happened. Mm. And it would, yeah. had it already been too late. At yeah, that point? like as in yeah no. Yeah, well they right. rang as it was happening, but then by the time she got yeah. to Fiona, they called it and sorry who was where singapore yeah so, singapore yeah. so he they chucked him on while well, the captain of the boat he was up there looking at because dad was just in just that disheveled the mm. captain literally just chucked him on a plane yeah right yeah uh, yeah wow and dad came home to me bottle of whiskey deep <laughs> yeah rambling and yeah that's, carrying on. that's terrible i can't even imagine that mm. um like by comparison, I think of my own situation. I think ah, I had it so good. <laughs> by, well, by comparison to that specific. But the thing is, even I've sort of had those thoughts because I've got another friend who's gone for similar sort of circumstances, yeah. and yeah. the circ- the way he's told me, like both the build up and the aftermath of what he's gone through, I'm just grateful that my family hasn't sort of had that because okay. I've sort of had a bit of 
family the stuff. divisions yeah. rather than joining together type of thing that's true my family bonded together really well um which is key i can't imagine mm. how well it would be tough yeah you can see sort of how it happens the, the emotions boil over in fact yeah. excuse me my family don't talk to my mum's family uh, from yeah. that week uh. <laughs> um so i guess that in mm. that sense there is that but um yeah, I that, think that's probably another it. little one quickly in relation to the responsibility. Like mum's mm. side of the family, mum is the like switched on one that mm. drive everything. The rest of them are a bit okay. disorganized and stuff. So mum was sort of the glue. Yeah, I've sort of had to do that a little bit. Mm-hmm. But there's some people on that side of the family I'm less tolerant of. Than yeah. others. <laughs> that's tough. I think. Um, uh, yeah, I can empathise with those who have to take on more responsibility in family dynamics. I think being the youngest and maybe being a bloke as well, like the, that expectation hasn't really fallen to me at all. Uh, um, so, yeah, hmm. uh, I appreciate you opening up about that, mate. That was um, it was good to know you a little bit uh, better. Uh, in the somewhere getting missed, we you mentioned ADHD. Yep. You've been diagnosed with ADHD yeah. uh, recently, right? Yeah, like, it was like, between like, grandma and mum. Yeah, I got, right. Well, I'd gone through the process. Well. Because I'd been going through the stuff on my nails, seeing my yep. GP a bit. Mm-hmm. Like I'd see him often enough to the point where we were sort of having a bit of conversation about where I was at in mm-hmm. life and stuff. Yeah. And he sort of said like, yeah, we should do a bit of a mental health plan type of thing. Cool. And I was like, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Because I was sort of, my head was in enough of a place where I went, yeah, I probably need a bit of a kick up the butt. Mm-hmm. And we sort of talked through a few things. He sent me, referred me to the psychiatrist for the ADHD stuff because I sort of just told him how after I'd finished uni, I've sort of floated a bit. Okay. Yeah. And I was a bit sort of anxious and that sort of shit as well. Yeah. Chatting to a psych a bit about that. Yeah. But the psychiatrist was the ADHD process. I had to wait like six months just to see the guy. Yeah. And then gave a bunch of like old primary school reports. Really? Yeah. Wow. Because like... Interesting. One of the big things is like, like reading the child, like the school reports, like, oh, could do better, has potential, all that sort of okay. shit. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I've seen a billion times on my yeah. report cards. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Um. So... You said in the video as well that like it, things kind of clicked for you when you had the diagnosis and things made yeah. sense. How, how do you mean? Well, sort of seeing just anecdotes of like other people with ADHD and the stuff they do. I'm like, yeah, I deal with that a lot too. Like, yeah, feel the social media pages and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, like those um those posts and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, that's relatable. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and a lot of that just went, yep, that's made to a T, that's made to a T. Yeah, okay. So uh, explain how it affects you, I guess. Like, uh, Sort of. The it, focus stuff we are talking about before with you, yeah. it's sort of that, like easily distracted, just feels like a million thoughts going from my head really? at any given moment. Sort of. Really? Because you do not strike mm. me like that at all. Mm. Well, I'm con- it's kind of like I'm vapid, but it's sort of like my brain's constantly just sort of uh, yeah, thinking right. about God knows what, really. Yeah, you seem you come across as a very chilled out, laid back person. Mm. So it's hard to imagine that in your head well, there's all this. It's, well, because that's... There's two sort of strains of ADHD. There's the hyperactivity side of things, which is more like the fidgety boys that are loud and obnoxious side of things. Okay. Then there's the inattentive kind. Okay. Where it's sort of like, that's just how a lot of girls actually with ADHD they slip under the radar because it's like the, okay. in, the inattentive type where they just sort of seem like they're there, but they're kind of not. They're just mm. sort of, some of them sort of in their own head a bit. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. So that's probably um, bringing into perspective, you know, the uni stuff we talked about yeah. earlier before and... Um, and, and how that would have been difficult for you. Having said all that, how, how is your overall mental health at the moment? It's getting better, I must. like. It wasn't great before? It wasn't great. It's still not the best, I must mm-hmm. say, but like probably the last sort of month or two, I'm sort of starting to feel a bit more funny and able to put myself out there a bit more rather than just sort of okay. numb and... Oh, really? Yeah. You felt kind of numb and... Uh, sort can of you expand on that a little bit? Like, sort of like just not motivated to engage sure. not having that confidence and ability to do it that i've mm-hmm. usually had yeah but i feel like i'm starting to get a bit of that charisma back that's good i guess any particular reason you think you're starting to feel more so like that probably or? just sort of time being able to start doing seeing like now that i've had the knee done that i can yeah that's a big progress one. to a point of normalcy yeah knowing that i've got ADHD and saying sort of game planning a bit more around it not that i've been too good with that yeah still procrastinating a lot still yeah, yeah, of course. Procrastination's yeah. a big symptom there as well. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I've been delving a little bit into like um, the issues young men face a little bit, yeah. like in terms of the content that I watch. Yeah, and um, I've probably turned a corner in like the last eight months, I'd say, yeah. of like feeling putrid before, mm. like really, really bad in a really, really dark place. Um, that was throughout 2022, and I didn't even have anything going on, <laughs> um, like, but in comparison to everything <laughs> we just talked about, but I was in a pretty dark place and. 
since then, I think the first thing I did was be careful with the content that I consume. Mm. That was the very yeah. first thing I did. That's something I probably need to be more mindful of. Yeah. Um, be it, you know, just scrolling on, on social media or whatever, or, um, you know, just mm. instead of choosing to watch The Office or something like that, that will numb me. Huh. I would put on like an intellectually stimulating podcast. Huh. And, uh, and to be fair, I would still play FIFA yeah. while I listen to it because that was just how I yeah, relaxed. Consume. Um, but I, the, the things that I chose to listen to uh, and listening to people that I wanted to be more like, mm. that permeated big time and it became yeah. if it made me feel like I could and wanted to become something more like yeah. them. Um, and the I think without going on a massive tangent, like one of the things that struck me is that with... With young men, like the role that men used to play in society of being like the, um, be it a hunter and gatherer or like yeah. the, the person who goes and gets the resources um, and the protector and all that, like a lot of the things that men used to be good for mm. have kind of been outsourced, right? So, yeah. like, we, you don't need men to protect anymore. Mm. We've got the army, we've got yeah. the, the police, mm. we've got the, the fire brigade, and that kind yeah. of men and women, obviously. Um, so that like men's roles in society have shifted a little bit and we, the, because of probably economic factors and also, um, like third wave feminism, uh, w- women are getting, yeah. um, leveling up as, yeah. as they should. Another one's also just like in movie production stuff, they've sort of emasculated men a lot, probably the last 30, 40 years. Interesting. You sort of see like yeah. the roles go from like, yeah, John Wayne, Clint Eastwood, cowboy guys would yeah. do all that stuff yeah. you alluded to. To whereas the bumbling Homer Simpson type idiots, mm. the Al Bundy type of... Yeah. He's an early example of how they've tried to make men look like bumbling, idi- incapable yeah. idiots. Yeah, that's And true. then 40 years of seeing this sort of portrayal of men sort of probably contributes to people who have grown up watching this sort of content. Possibly, yeah. And the other thing about it is like, yeah, so women levelling up is great. Obviously, yeah. there's no... Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. That's what we want. Um, but... To, men haven't been able to men have been pushed aside a little bit in the sense that even if you look at like the dating marketplace right hmm. women tend to um, in their nature look for partners that are on the either their level Equal or above, above yeah. in, in like in terms of socioeconomic yeah, above, and education theory, as well. yeah. um, and men t- tend to look <laughs> sideways and down so what's yeah. happening as well like men are stagnating and probably yeah. possibly even dipping for yeah. a variety of reasons that I don't, don't I'd, even, I'd give a bit of a dip yeah probably yeah. a bit of a dip and women are, are smashing it yeah. right and so if women are looking up then the yeah. <laughs> it's, the, the percentage of men that mm. they're willing to look at is getting smaller and smaller yeah, yeah. and social media makes them a lot more accessible too mm. so you have the, the men at the top doing really really well yeah. and then the, this glut in the middle with yeah. without purpose and I, I think that's what it really comes down to is, is men not having like a purpose um, that uh, drives them and I think mm. for me in terms of my ability to navigate out of a, a crappy time in my life where I had mm. nothing like going on, I've developed a purpose now. It's mm. it's it's progressing like an online career and being able yeah. to travel and stuff like that. And that might only last mm. me six months, but um, I think that's that's what's shifted something in me mentally where I'm just mm. hyper productive now and mm. I, I feel animalistic <laughs> a little bit. That is lame, but um, just building myself up as much as possible is yeah. something that's that's really driven me. Um, yeah, that's sort of where I'm at, but I'm probably at the foundation or yeah. stages. Yeah, it takes, Even though it takes time. One thing I'll sort of just give myself credit for, I guess, is sort of like the first sort of twenty five ish years of my life, I did sort of stick to the goal. Yep. Even though I've sort of wandered a bit the last few years, I've mm. still know I've done that first twenty five ish years of solid no, groundwork that I can lean back on. Yeah, yeah. And what are you, twenty seven? Yeah. Yeah. So like that wasn't even that long yeah. ago. Um, Two percent, or ten percent of my life, yeah. whatever so far. If you could, ide- envisage like an ideal life for you in like five years, yeah. what would it be? Ideal, yeah. Poker, professional poker. Really, player. I'd, I'd love to do that. that. That's the dream, but it's, it's one of those ones. It's a, kind of a two-sided coin because most like people who are able to play professionally, it just sort of just becomes a grind where you're working shit hours, which is like weekends, nights, mm-hmm. and shit. Yeah, turns into just a grind. Yeah. So I'd, and that sort of things that turn me off but I just love playing the game just sort of mm. the way I think about it, sort of the way I think about life as well that's once I sort of started learning a bit more about poker fear I sort of went that's how I look at life like mm. there's like a range of possibilities rather than just sort of honing in on one thing you sort of focus on that yeah. range of possibilities and make your decision accordingly yeah that's I do good. that in real life and I was gonna say I think okay. your brain works like that anyway which is yeah. good as for the grind lifestyle I, I think it's actually good for people mm. um, I think we 
we focus a lot on um, you know what's an ideal life. It's all about balance and work yeah. and, and stuff like that, and that's that's great if that works for you. But I think I think men are driven by this. Uh, and I, I'm sort of talking to a male audience, kind of why I said men, but I, I think it's probably true of both genders. Mm. And and women, um, as an aside, have done a great job. Like when they're when things aren't going well for women, they tend to really improve themselves. And when uh, things aren't going well for men, they tend to yeah. Um, so that's another observation I made. But sorry, that wild wildly um, broad point that I was going to make was that I think this this constant pursuit of something be it like a poker mm. career on the side yeah. and getting obsessive with it is actually mm. something that is really really good for your brain mm. um, at least that's what i've found yeah. for well me. that's what the fantasy sports has sort of become a little bit for me mm. lately like well since the nfl league just sort of because there's like that range of possibilities of players like especially draft leagues because there's only one of each player which is like yeah true a big different factor or which, afl game day squad yeah that's yeah, another check one check it yeah. out Bloody i'm yeah. actually really enjoying that by the way uh, um yeah yeah, yeah i hear you here um we have just ticked over an hour bush so i think oh, we'll beautiful. probably wrap it up fairly soon yep. um thank you very much for 99 episodes oh, yep. um basically 100 100 yep this will be the last time i see you before i fly oh, yeah. as well mate so um, oh, yeah. all the best thank you so oh, much yeah. for, for everything um definitely obviously a huge part of true footy the audience <laughs> loves you yep. um thank you for you know having this great set oh, yeah um do you think this will be the last time we record in here like do you think you will still be here we might we're sort of still thinking about moving there's yeah. a lot a lot of things going on because of the last year obviously dad can't make his mind up i can't really make my mind up mm. seen Fair a enough. few places but none of them are perfect all sorts of it's a great set just let him oh, yeah. for the podcast yeah definitely yeah. whoever moves in will insist yeah. they keep it like this yeah true yeah we'll but, just like sub yeah. it out to us but yeah, maybe even before we move or whatever, I might sneak one or two in with like Lenny or something when he's in town or whatever, cool. or potty or whatever, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, the, the audience is not going to not see you anymore. You're yeah. going to be part of True Footy as well, which is great. Yeah, we'll be, through we'll be doing Skypeys. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah that's still going to be on the agenda. Uh, but it is an end of an era, so to speak. And um, yep. yeah, thank you so much for everything you do for the channel, mate, and being a great friend. So, Bloody yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah, cool. Thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed this Ooh, new, yeah. new look at Daniel Busher. Um, <laughs> Daniel Busher exposed. Yeah. You know what I'm going to miss the most, actually? The Manscaped ads. Oh, yeah, they're fun. Yeah, the, they're so fun. The one we did yesterday, um, <laughs> that was that was real fun. So uh, um, yeah, thank you, Bush. And um, we'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers. Bloody Earth. Oh, I know. I'll see you while I'm in America. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>